All right, everyone. Got an awesome guest here for you, Stuart Holmes. I uh, met him through Instagram. He does some pretty awesome things with archery. He's a lot better photography than me by far. And uh, he does some pretty cool things in his day-to-day -day job as well. I'm big into hunting. But before I give too much of an intro here, Stuart, who are you? Um, and and I guess anything you want to share with the listeners? Yeah, sure, man. Thanks for having me. Um, who am I? So uh, currently I um, work in steel manufacturing in Alabama, uh, run all the finance and purchasing and everything there. And um, I have, uh, I'm married and have two kids. So I've got a 15 year old daughter, got a nine year old son, and they are uh, obviously why I get out of bed and do what I do. Um, and, you know, really have a passion for what I do and watching the company grow, but also have a passion for the outdoors, archery, bow hunting. Um, it's been with me since probably since I was seven years old. So I, dad got me started on the, on the right foot, I would say. That's awesome. That's really cool. So you, you've got two kids. I don't envy the 15 year old daughter. Um, I've got a 15 year old son. We just went through the teenage years with our daughter and uh, man, it's, it, it's interesting uh, having teenagers and uh, not even just the difference between, you know, male and female, but just every kid being different. Um, it, it's just such a different experience, you know? Uh, and then even right now we've got our daughter just did her first day of kindergarten um, and her first day of kindergarten. And I'm a little bit more excited about her in school than I am about our eight-year-old. Well, he'll be eight in about a month um, than our seven-year-old because he's more social butterfly, likes to kind of go off the rails and do his own thing and is very adamant about that. Whereas she's kind of the, okay, and school just fits her a little bit better. Whereas Asher, like you throw him out in the woods, he'd be great. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that, um, no, go ahead. That's, that's funny. The, um, yeah, the, the 15 year old daughter, it's, be, it's like, I've become exponentially cooler and mom has become uh, not so much anymore. So I'm like <laughs> the, I feel like I'm the referee of the house a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the, my, my son is sporty outdoorsy, you know, he just wants to hunt and fish and sees why, you know, why, why do I have to go to the school thing? Uh, and then our <laughs> daughter, you know, she's excelling and, you know, cheerleader and everything else. So yeah. couldn't be different. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just informed my wife. So our, our older kids, uh, they, they're not huge into hunting. They love getting outside backpacking, um, camping and all of that, but they're not really big into hunting. Whereas my two younger kids, the seven and five-year-old have already interest are interested in hunting with me and going with me. And, uh, and I told my wife, I was like, yeah, cause you know, September's coming up. We're planning out the dates that, um, you know, I'm going to be out of town. And, uh, I was like, and when they get old enough, you bet your money, they're going to be getting pulled out of school for a couple of days. And she's like, you can't do that. I'm like, want to bet watch me <laughs> watch me exactly um but yeah no so that that's awesome i i, I love being a dad i really do and I'm, I, you seem to to enjoy that as well i know you don't put a ton of it on social media because you're more focused on archery and all those other things but um you know you can just tell whenever you, you talk about your kids that uh you love being a dad so uh i i respect that that's awesome so having a nine to five you've got a couple kids uh, you just got back from south dakota uh, hunting pronghorn, right? Yep. And then, uh, let's see. So we'll get into the hunting here in a little bit, but how did you, so you grew up shooting a bow, uh, from what I understand, from what you mentioned, um, how was that process? Cause a lot of people that I talk to are kind of like me where it's adult onset archery syndrome or adult onset hunting, whatever you want to call it. Um, it sounds like you grew up that way. So kind of walk me through that process of how your dad introduced, introduced you to, uh, archery and, uh, maybe some key things that us as parents being first generation can help our kids, you know, get into archery without feeling, you know, like they're forced. Yeah, sure. So I grew up in uh, Northwest Florida. So hunting, uh, we have deer and we have hogs, but it's not like the pinnacle of deer or hog hunting or any kind of hunting really to, for that matter. But, um, my father really passionate outdoorsman. Um, you know, he, mainly gun hunted, uh, growing up with a, you know, with a rifle and, and that, and that's kind of how he got me started, but, um, he got into archery a little bit in his younger years and had some bows just kind of like laying around in the garage. And I found this, uh, I think it was, it's like bright fluorescent orange fiberglass bear, uh, 
recurve longbow hybrid something and a handful of busted seated air uh, cedar arrows and i just you know kind of got out there and you know dad how does how does this thing work so he set me up a little like box target in the back and i'd sit on the you know back you know patio there at seven or eight years old and just fling arrows and just he didn't he just let me have fun. And that's, that's, I think probably, you know, at that age, that's all a kid needs to do is, you know, don't worry about the bow hand grip. Don't worry about the release. Just let them, let them go fling arrows and have fun. So that's kind of how it got started. Um, and then I just had a love for it. It was just immediate, you know, watching the arrow hit where you aim, where you intended to aim is just, to me, it's, it's methodical, um, you know, approach to completing something. Um, so from there, it kind of, you know, I, I think I got a compound, uh, a bear compound, which is like a bear cub or black bear or something like that growing up. And it was right-handed. So I'm a lefty, left eye dominant, and everything we had was right-handed and youth, there wasn't a youth model left-handed, you know, back then. So we're talking, you know, early nineties, something like that, late eighties, early nineties. And, um, you know, shot that for a while, outgrew it. Um, about that time, I'm like, you know, really jonesing for a, you know, new setup. And dad's like, well, there's a lawnmower. Uh, here's gas, knock yourself out. So I went and cut yards in the heat of Florida summer, <laughs> as many as I could saved up and bought uh, my first left hand bow. And to me, that was like, you know, I had to relearn everything. And that's where I first really learned, okay, how to do correct grip, how to do correct release. Um, so, you know, the progression of that was, was, um, you know, really purely archery at that point, I wasn't pulling enough poundage or anything to, you know, really go hunt or kill anything. Um, so it was purely about the love of just, like I said, shooting and watching an arrow hit where you aim. That's just so satisfying. And, um, you know, from there it kind of progressed into my dad got interested around my teenage years. Um, and he, he bought his first compound or yeah, actually his first compound bow. And he and I kind of learned modern archery together, which was super cool. And then, um, we learned how to deer hunt together, which was super cool. So, you know, while it was, well, I'm not, I guess, technically a first generation type of, you know, bow hunter in itself, we, we did it together. And that was yeah. just really an amazing experience. No, that's awesome. Okay. So then, yeah, I would consider, you know, people can get in the weeds and all the technicalities, but in all reality, you and your dad were pretty much learning archery together. I mean, he, you know, he may have, he may have shot bows before, but didn't get into the weeds um, yeah. like his technical son did. So, you know, <laughs> being all technical and, and tinkering around and wanting to learn things, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, and and I, I think a lot of people need to key in on that as well of the left eye dominance. Um, you know, watching out for that. Cause we can all assume, you know, if you're right-handed that everyone else is right-handed, you kind of forget about that. And, yep. uh, we took, uh, my son's friend to the archery range, um, or to the bow shop, the pro shop, we were working on my bow, but I had them bring their little bow so that they could shoot in the back. Um, and one of the coaches was there and she let our neighbor kid borrow a bow. Cause she was watching him shoot. And she was like, is he left-handed? I'm like, I don't know. It's not my kid. Like right. <laughs> I just picked him up on the street and brought him because he wanted to shoot. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but uh she was like she handed him a left hand bow and he hit the target first shot. And so um it's interesting that she was able to pick up on that because obviously she coaches all day. Uh but yeah, keeping keeping an eye out for that because even if you are right handed, you could be left eye dominant, which you know, you want a left handed rifle, you want a left handed bow. Yep. in those situations it just makes it easier even if you are naturally right-handed so just kind of keeping an eye out for that um that's a big deal but then you know i think it's cool that that your dad didn't just say you know this is the way you do it um you know he he listened to you you guys had those conversations you were able to go through the progression together rather than him being stuck in no this is the right way to do it i don't care what they say like because some people get that you know they don't want their kid to be coached by someone else or to learn from someone else. Um, when in reality, you know, it might be the best thing. So I think that's, right. that's cool that you guys worked on that together. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Yeah. We, we had, um, it, where I grew up, it was a, actually it was a 
gun shop and they had in the upstairs it was an indoor archery range i think you could get 20 maybe 25 yards out of it and um it was a really cool shop they carried pretty much every you know major brand of bow and man i was like a bow shop rat uh through you know high school like you know if i didn't have a car at the time my parents would give me a ride drop me off and for a couple bucks i'd shoot all day and you know pester the heck out of uh, <laughs> all the bow techs and everything so i had um a really cool um old timer is what, what i'll call him and he really showed me grip proper grip and proper release and and, and all that and um i remember him he's like you're not going to stop shooting until you know i see the the wristling so on bows most bows back then you had a you know wristling mm -hmm. until i see you use that wristling let the bow drop out of your hand type of thing um so just a old school type of stuff like that that really stuck with me helped me you know get right <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome and again you had someone there that that was willing to put in that time uh, obviously you were willing to put in the time and uh I, I think that's really cool that's that's good to hear that there's you know there's people out there that's again goes back to kind of the community aspect of of archery um don't get me wrong i, I love hunting in general but there's something about people who truly are passionate about archery and archery even hunting um because again, there's people out there that pick up their bow the day before season starts and go and, you know, dust it off and hope that it's still sighted in from last year. Um, and, you know, they have the rusty broadheads, et cetera, but they, you know, there, there's, there's those people and, and, but the majority of the community from what I've seen is people that are like that old timer, uh, where they want to help and, and they want to see you get better. Um, so that, that's awesome. That's really cool that you had that. So then you grew up, did you play sports? Yeah. So I, I played baseball since I was, you know, really young. Uh, baseball was kind of the primary sport around there. Uh, played football in middle school, high school, ran track pretty much middle school, high school. Um, so I was, I was active and, you know, got into weightlifting whenever we started playing football. So I've always been extremely active, um, you know, and, and still compete to a some level, whether it's, you know, a lot of these days, it's kind of endurance type stuff. Um, but yeah. So for anyone that hasn't gone out and played or done a, a two a day practice in humidity, yeah. in the middle of the summer before yeah. school starts, I challenge you to go out there and do a workout with your local high school team. If you are in the humidity, because it is awful. Oh, it's brutal. And then that <laughs> afternoon you get to put the same wet, nasty pads on and do it all oh, over. Oh man, I could smell the locker room right now. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> like 100%. you just know, yeah, there's no drying that stuff out. Oh my goodness. And then that's, you, that's right. another 10 pounds that you're running around with because it's yep. just drenched. Yeah, that's oh, right. You did, you did that, I guess. And was it North Carolina? Yeah. In North Carolina. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had a, I had an experience one time where um, I had some stuff stolen out of my bag. And I went to the coaches about it. It was, you know, it was brand new iPod at the time, right? When you had the little circle thing that you would yeah. you know, scroll around. Um, I'd gotten it for Christmas and, or no, maybe it was my birthday. And then um, anyway, it got stolen out of my bag by team teammates. Right. right. Yeah, and, sure. uh, and so I went to the coach about it and um, he made us do up downs. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Up downs in full gear uh, until sure. someone fessed up. And of course, no one fessed up and everyone was pissed yeah. off at me, even though I did the up downs with them. Right. Right. Um, right. Man, that was oh, my goodness. Ugh. Those are brutal times. Anyway, <laughs> character building is what you yeah. say. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, it's character building. I'll never forget it. That's for sure. <laughs> <Not right. laughs> they definitely. Yeah. Um, but no, that that's really cool. And now you're in Alabama, like, like yep. you were saying. Um, so you didn't get away from the humidity quite yet. Uh, nope. but you're slowly moving West. So we'll, we'll get you out here eventually. Right. We'll get you hooked on the pronghorn and the mule deer and the elk. But, uh, um, so your, your passion for, for bows is there, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this, uh, this whole photography thing. Um, right. when did you, cause you've got a blog as well. Yep. And, uh, you know, at the end we'll, we'll put all the stuff here in, in the notes mm -hmm. for people to go check out for sure. Um, but why photography? Like, why did you get into, into photography? That's a good question. So growing up, um, so my mom is an art teacher and 
before she was an art teacher and, and I was just two, she went to school. And I mean, I don't know how the woman did it. Like probably the most inspiring, you know, person in my whole life was, was her doing that it, with a two-year-old school work somehow made it work. So I've always had like an artistic influence, whether it's drawing, painting. I mean, she was always active in, in kind of, you know, whether it was me or my brother and sister, always doing something artistic or, or whatever. So um, I guess I've always had kind of an eye for it. And um, later in my life, my stepfather um, got into photography quite a bit. And he was also an art teacher at high school. So he did um he gave photography lessons and things like that and this was back when like you went into a dark room and developed mm. your photos yeah so um i think i was i was probably in middle school and got really interested in um you know all the cool pictures he would take and and all that so <clears throat> he kind of taught me a little bit some of the three basics about you know lighting and and you know how to set your camera and that type of thing um, so that was, that was buried. It was a seed that was planted way, way, way back then when, and, uh, you know, I hadn't really touched, I guess, a camera and the closest thing was, you know, all the iPhones and things like that, that have come out. So I kind of played on that and, um, took some pictures and people are like, wow, you took that with an iPhone. And I'm like, yeah, believe it or not. And I know there's some people that cringe to, to hear that, but I, I've taken some really cool stuff with, a, with an iPhone, oh, an yeah. old iPhone, not even the new iPhones, <laughs> right? So um, eventually, um, I think my wife or mom was like, you should just really go get, go get a camera, go, go buy like a decent camera. So I uh, went and got a, um, this, I'm going to get probably too technical for this, but it wasn't a full frame uh, Sony, but kind of a, a crop sensor type of Sony still interchangeable lenses and all that. And it was just off to the races from there and experimenting and playing. And, um, you know, that was, it, it all kind of came back, whether it was my, my mom in, in the back of my head saying, okay, look at the angle, change your angle, or, um, you know, your, your lighting is not good there. Wait for your lighting to do this, that, or the other. So whether it was my mom or my stepfather in the back of my head, I could kind of hear both of them kind of guiding me through the process. And then, I don't know, it just kind of came be, uh, came uh, to be its own thing. That's awesome. So the seed was planted. You, you ended up going and getting a decent camera. Now by decent, did you, uh, did you go all in on the camera? Like, I don't know enough about cameras to, to know, but. No. So, okay. so I didn't go. So you have kind of, you have a full frame, you know, which is like your, your Sony a7s and, and okay. those types. I, I, I think I started with a, uh, a Sony alpha 6,000 was the first one and then bumped up to an alpha 6,500. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, still got a very high tech, you know, sensor in it. It's just a crop sensor. It's a smaller mm -hmm. sensor. Um, so you're not quite getting, um, the, the, the detail of things that, you know, a big professional camera was. And actually, if you look on my Instagram, 99% of all of that is either an iPhone or the little crop sensor camera. Mm -hmm. I've just recently within the last two weeks said, you know what, it's time, time to get serious now, Jonathan. So <laughs> I went and got a, uh, a, um, a seven four and, um, man, it is, it's super cool. So just wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That was really cool. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to hear because I, I've gotten the same thing where, um, you know, people have asked me, they're like, Hey, would you take that with them? I'm like, no, iPhone. Like, I don't really, and I don't really edit things either. Like I just, you know, whatever looks cool to me is what I, what I take. So, yeah. um, that that's awesome. Yeah. I tried to carry a camera around for a hunt. Uh, I want to say it was last year and, um, I just, I, it ruined the hunt experience for me. So I, it, yeah. it, it allowed me to, gain more respect for the people that actually go out and self film. <clears throat> but in all reality, like for me, that just, that was not, I'd rather have this little slim thing that I can throw out, you know, and, and take a video or a picture and, and trust me, I am not a light packer by any means or any stretch of the word. Um, I overpack I think for I've, everything. Yeah. I think I've heard you mention that on past podcasts. Like you, Multiple, you have, you have everything. <laughs> so let me tell you. So we went back by the time this comes out, it, this will be weeks ago, but um, I took my son up and it was supposed to be the three of us. Well, my, my middle son wasn't able to go. So it was just me and the younger son. And uh, dude, I, I don't know how, 
but like my pack was like twice the weight of my buddy's pack <laughs> and this was just for a day and a half trip and i get home and i'm just looking at it, i'm like i didn't even touch half the stuff in this pack but like you know i planned for everything i'm like well if there's no water well i brought like eight liters of water for oh, me and God. my son <laughs> like all this stuff right and uh i just i'm like I was testing the limits of the bag. That's what I was doing, right? That's what... <laughs> right. Now you're the man to have on a hike or a hunt because uh, no, for real. I don't have it. I'll carry less knowing you do. <laughs> Dude, that's and that's what we always joke about. Brent, uh, my buddy, will carry nothing, right? Yeah. And depending on how many days is is if he does or does not bring even a change of clothes. And so, like, he's one of those people. And I'm like, well, if it's going to rain or if it's going to get cold all of a sudden or if this. Or, and I've always got the extra goodies, right? So, like, we're sitting around the fire. And, of course, I want to share it because, one, it helps cut the weight. But, two, like, I'm, I'm a good guy. I like to share things. Right. And they're like, man, these are the best snacks. I'm like, I know, right? And they're like, this is why your pack's so heavy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, exactly. That's why I train so much in the gym so that I can carry the heavy pack. You know, I don't have to worry about cutting the ounces and cutting my toothbrush in half. Right. Like, yeah. right. <laughs> no, man. I've, yeah. I've seen some of your, your gym posts. You're a, you're a beast. Yeah. I wouldn't go that far, but I definitely after like it. to train. I, I, yeah, I definitely do. Um, yeah. So moving on to, uh, well, so photography there, you know, that that's something that it really does interest me. I just haven't put the time into it. Um, is there any goals that you have in mind with your photography other than you, you share a lot of good things between your blog and, or your blog and, uh, and Instagram, um, do you have a goal in mind, kind of what you're aiming to do with that? So I always want my pure photography or pictures to be a piece of artwork. Like I, you know, maybe not every post, but pretty much most of my posts, I want somebody to look at and be like, man, I'd love to print that and frame it or something like I want it to be that that good of quality now sometimes in Instagram or on the blog you're just taking purely informational shots or something to demonstrate it's kind of hard to add an art element to that but I really you know I, I kind of hate the Instagram got away from the pure photography and I'm sure I'm like the one millionth person to to say that um but but yeah, that's my goal with the photography. I think where I'm going is, and or where everything seems to be going is reels and video and, and exploring, you know, that. And that's something that is very new to me. So, um, you know, there's guys out there that make some of the coolest reels and we, we both know a few of them. Uh, so, you know, Nick and that crew just make some unreal uh, reels, uh, no pun intended there, but um, <laughs> you know, for me, uh, you know, I'd like to get a little bit better with that. And, you know, with the blog itself, it's coming to, I'm coming to reality with that, that, you know, while the writing aspect of it is, is neat and easy mm -hmm. for me to do, everybody's like saying, well, why don't you get on YouTube? So I've just yeah. now started to post a couple of things on YouTube. Um, it's a lot more work, <laughs> a lot more to learn. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm going with it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, you know, unfortunately, written is definitely going away. Um, and, and it's it's just the attention span thing like that. The whole I can't do TikTok. I, I tried it. I, I can't. Same. I just can't do it. And then on top of that, the terms and conditions that we've all come to find out about yeah. kind of freaked me out a little bit. So um, TikTok is a no go for me. But I mean, Instagram Reels honestly, yeah, the only reason why I make them is to get more people to mm -hmm. me. Whereas before it used to be, you know, just pictures, which is why I started Instagram as well. Um, yeah. a couple of years ago, it's just because I wanted to share pictures with people, things that I thought was cool in a, in a nice caption. Right. So, uh, you know, pros and cons to everything, uh, you know, the pro of shooting everything on the iPhone is the live photos. So you don't have to take video specifically. You can just yeah. slap a live photo <laughs> in with some music and you're good to go. That's um, right. but, but no, that, that's, that's awesome, dude. I, I love that you look at it as, as art, um, that it's something that you want to share with other people. And, uh, and, and I'm excited to see what you're going to do with the YouTube, um, because it's, you know, the blog's good. Um, you just yeah. don't get a lot of traction with that unfortunately it's more it's almost like a newspaper um yep. you know do you read a newspaper anymore yeah who wants to read that right and it, exactly it, and like i even designed it knowing like okay these are three to four minute reads still it just you know there there yeah there's a handful of people that will go read it um i do get 
you know, I've got a lot of increase in traffic, but I've, I have two YouTube videos. One I just posted yesterday, but one before, and it's already like, you know, that a couple thousand or so views. And I'm like, okay, well, clearly the, the audience has spoken. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. And that, that, that's awesome. So I'm, I'm excited to see where that's going to take off for you. Um, so how doing all these different things, uh, and you go to the gym, right? You're, you're, I, I think I've seen you post about that every oh, once yeah. in a while, but, but yeah, so you're, you're into the gym for those of you, you know, watching that video or watching this video. Um, and if, if you're not on the video, Mr. Buttoned up over here, looks all professional and nice. He's got the, you know, the hair done and cleaned up, <laughs> shaped up beard. He's got the glasses, like just, you know, perfectly buttoned up, uh, just employee, right. Or I guess the <laughs> CFO, you're, you do some awesome stuff. So you're more of the employer, but, uh, basically, you're all buttoned up, but you used to be a Marine, right? I know it's always Marine. So, yeah, but, uh, so you're, you're a Marine at heart underneath the buttoned upness. Uh, and, and so obviously a big portion of that is fitness, right? Um, sure. trying to be tip top shape, make sure you're able to take care of your loved ones, your family. And of course, you know, everything else that goes into it, like hunting and things like that. Um, talk to me a little bit about how, what is kind of your, your training? What do you do? Is this something that you enjoy? Is it something you do kind of out of habit or necessity? Mm -hmm. You know, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, maybe start why I do it. So, you know, one, of course, I want to, you know, have longevity. I want to see my kids have grandkids and who knows with, you know, modern medical, whatever, great, you know, great, great grandkids or something. I mean, really, that's what it's all about. Um, but I think another aspect is I've, I've done some form of physical activity, working out, exercising, you know, for a long, for most of my life. And I can tell that if I don't get a workout in within a couple of days, it's just something builds up and I get grouchy and I get, you know, kind of irritable. And my wife's like, can you go lift heavy stuff or go run or do something? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, and it doesn't matter i mean all, all it takes is whether it's a 30 minute run or whether i go and you know lift weights or, or whatever it is when i'm done it's it's like oh, okay now i'm good i'm human again so it there is a necessity aspect and it could be you know how your body releases chemicals and, and everything else i mean it, it definitely affects me um in terms of you know what i do as a as a fitness regimen um I was really into weights through high school and you couldn't tell, you know, probably by now, I mean, I'm, I'm fit, but I was a, I was a, I was a bigger dude at one point in time. And, um, up until maybe five or six years ago, I got into endurance sports. Uh, so that was when we lived over in Europe. So I lived in Helsinki, Finland for two years and it's a lot less, you know, meathead gym, you know, lifting weights and things like that. And it's a lot more of, you know, cycling and cross country skiing and these types of things. So it kind of opened up my, you know, broadened my horizon in terms of that. And, um, I think I, I ran my first half marathon over there. I, I bought a, you know, a bike, did some cycling, which translated into triathlon. I'd done some Ironman event, you know, like it, it kind of went a complete opposite direction. So I went from, you know, not doing any cardio and just lifting weights and eating half a cow at every meal to, you know, endurance athlete. And when I came back into the U S like my friends and family were like, Whoa, are you, are you sick? Are you, are you okay? Like I'd lost so much weight. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, you know, where I'm at now, it's, it's kind of something in between. So I've got, um, a guy right now, um, Kyle Herbers, who's doing some programming for me. Um, and I find having a coach is, is really benefit beneficial or having a program to follow i don't have time to think about it and he just gives me what i need it goes into my app and i freaking hammer it out and it could be a hit workout it could be kind of an endurance um you know run and bike type of of deal um so he throws me you know all kinds of stuff and we could be shooting one you know i could be shooting at 50 yards after you know doing step ups on a box that go. type of thing yeah I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. That, it's funny to, to hear, you know, that you've lived over there and you've noticed the difference in how they train. And, um, it, it, 
and then you went to that extreme, right? You, you, you kind of seem like one of those people that takes things and then runs with it and goes, you know, to the, to the ends of whatever. So with photography, you know, maybe you had a slow progression through, uh, you know, your cameras, but you're, you're at the top of the line camera now, right? You've yeah. got with your bows, like you, you, you started out kind of smaller and now you've, you've gotten into some of the nicer, newer bows that are just being released. Uh, you know, your job, you're not just a financial guy, you're a CFO. Like you seem to, you, you take these things and, and you make the most out of them. I love that. That's awesome. Um, so that, that's a good training to mix things up, especially if you don't have, you know, I, I personally try to get into like the power lifting. I, I was bulking, right. You know, everyone right. says that, you. um, I've got the opposite problem of you is I put on weight really easy. Uh, so I have to watch what I'm doing, what kind of weight I'm putting on, whether it's muscle or fat. Right. And, um, and so, you know, going into that, I was like, well, it feels good for the 45 minutes that you're in the gym, but outside of the gym, what is all that muscle for? Like, what is it really going to do for me? I feel yeah. tight. I get tired easier. Like it, it doesn't do a lot, but then you go to the opposite spectrum where you're doing a lot of endurance stuff. And then you're like, but I want to be able to lift this thing when I need to be able to lift this thing. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so it, it's good that you're, it's cool that you've kind of found that middle ground that works for you um and, and and i think that's awesome that you've experienced different things a lot of people get stuck in in what they want to do um yeah. and you're you've opened up kind of your your eyes and and you have a trainer that's willing to work with you as well on that so that's awesome um so with with your your fitness family your job Ooh. photography blog youtube <laughs> list goes on tinkering <laughs> we haven't even gotten into your tinkering with your bows yeah. uh but how do you how do you find a way to is it, there's not really a balance right when you're yeah. this busy the scales tip and i I'm, i hear this from dan i don't know if he got this from someone or if he came up with this but tipping the scales happens a lot there's not really balance because when you're at balance you're you're at zero you mm -hmm. could be balanced, but you're not going to progress in any stage of your life. You're just going to kind of exist. Right? right. And so, you know, sometimes it tips in photography's favor. Sometimes it, it tips in bows, you know, how do you find, how do you, you kind of, I guess, juggle that on a day-to-day -day basis and, and yeah. find success? That's a really good question. Well, I think <clears throat> if there's one gift I have um, it's, it's kind of like, backing up, looking at the big picture, be strategic about everything you do during, you know, during the week. So, um, you know, and I don't, I don't plan out every minute or every hour of, of the week, but I definitely look ahead, be it a few days, be it a week or so and fine tune what I'm going to do. So I've got a plan. Um, I've thought of thought things through and I think that's what you have to do, whether it's, you know, family time, whether it's um, a million different hobbies or your fitness or whatever else is you, you have to place time. Otherwise, someone's going to place that time for you or you waste it yourself. I mean, you can sit on your phone and, you know, uh, blow an hour easy. Um, so, again, it's just being strategic about everything you do. You you um, you only get so many hours in a day. You can't get them back. Um, so you have to make it worth, you know, uh, you know, what it's supposed to be. And, I, you know, I think another aspect is, you know, in the family side of things, and I've, I heard the, the podcast conversation with Dan, he says he's no expert, but I think from what I see, he does a really good job at it. Um, you know, and I would like to think that, you know, I do the same, um, of course, you know, my wife and kids would probably always want more time or more attention, but, uh, we became really tight over in Fenland because it was just us. We got outside of our friends, our family, our hobbies and everything. And we bonded as, a, as it was the tightest bonding experience that we ever had. Probably the, similar when you moved and you're, you're away from your family, for example, in North Carolina, and you bonded to your, your wife and your new kids and you have your own kids and these types of things. Um, that bond is, it allows you and frees up uh, much more. It doesn't hinder you. It actually magnifies what you do. No, oh, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely encourage people to, to get out of, you know, I, I don't know anyone that is extremely successful. They could be doing a good job at life, but that is, that is really hitting that success that they either say they want, or, you know, that 
I would consider being successful on a regular basis um, that is in my hometown still, you know, that I grew up with. They've either all moved away and found their success in other places. And I think you hit that nail on the head is that you start to bond with, if you're by yourself, you start to be able to kind of internalize and focus on your goals, what you're wanting to do and get better at that. Whereas if you're back home, you're able to just kind of lounge around. It's just like with kids, if they stay in the house, I try and get my kids out at 18. I'm like, I love you. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> you know, like For sure. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that's our son's getting married here. And, and uh, by the time this is out, he'll be married. But, um, you know, I'm excited for him because, and my wife, you know, is the opposite. My wife wants to shelter him and do all this <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, yeah, get out, go experience. <laughs> Cause you're not going to grow unless you leave at least the nest, if not the whole state. Right. And so uh, I I think that's great. And I I would challenge a lot of people to do that. Um, Whether that be, you went to Finland, you served in the military, you know, I've been to Mexico for two years. Uh, That's Mm -hmm. definitely no one there that I knew and a whole nother language, right. Uh, Serving a mission. And so I felt like that helped me grow, just like you're mentioning here with the Finland. And I'm sure the military was another big thing. You bonded with the guys that you were serving with because you all had that same goal in mind. You created a whole nother family yep. in the military. I don't know anyone that's been in the military that doesn't at least miss that aspect of it. There might be the whole you know, hurry up and wait that you don't miss, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> and all the bureaucracy and everything else, but the bonding, I haven't heard one pe- one person, I grew up in a military family that didn't say that they, that they didn't miss that. Everyone misses that. Yeah. And so um, anyway, I, I think that that's, that's a really good point there. So, uh, you, you, you say you don't plan every single minute, but you do find ways to kind of take that step back, look at the big picture. What do I really need to focus on today? What do I need to focus on tomorrow? Um, do you find it hard sometimes when you're like, okay, today I need to focus on this task, maybe even at work, but you're like, oh, but, but in two weeks, I'm going to be chasing yeah. those bugles. You know, (laughs) is it hard sometimes to to be able to focus even when you're like today is work, but you're like, but you know, you hit that lunch break or whatever. Do you find that sometimes? With with hunting, yes. So (laughs) I am I'm a I'm a I'm a very serious hunter. Like, you know, a lot of people that say, Oh, we're gonna go out, we're gonna have a good time. Like, yeah, but that's not really what I want to hear. I want to hear we're getting mm-hmm. after it. That's what I want to hear when I go to the woods. But but yeah, I mean, I look forward to that. It's sometimes it's hard to concentrate, but I find me personally, if I plan something, I have it set in my head a certain timeline of something that's happening. It's a lot easier for me to cope with what I'm doing right now because I know that's coming. Um, I think one of the gifts I don't have is patience or dealing with change or dealing with like unexpected change. Um, so if there's, you know, something that hinders me from going on that hunt in a couple of weeks, like we've got problems, like, (laughs) so that's probably my, my worst (laughs) attribute. (laughs) No, I definitely understand that. I, uh, and I I definitely pass that on to our youngest son as well as the whole idea of, but you said this was the plan. Like he says that he's like, and he's so focused on. So if, if you told me this thing, but it ended up being that, so does that make you a liar? Like, you know, he's like very, you know. He sounds like my (laughs) nine-year-old. There you go. Yeah, so we've passed that on, whether that be good or bad. Um, I very much like to plan things out, and when it doesn't go according to plan, I've had to kind of back off on that a little bit. Because, you know, having kids, nothing goes according to plan. That's right. Nothing. You can't plan on anything. That's right. (laughs) Um, But but that that's awesome. So, so yeah, I, I definitely think that's key making sure you kind of time block. I'm still figuring that out myself uh, because again, having kids, it's hard to time block because they might need your attention in the middle of one of those blocks of time. Sure. But, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, so let's talk a little bit about hunting now. Yeah. Uh, you just got back from South Dakota. Talk, walk us through that trip a little bit. Yeah. So um, this trip was actually a pretty neat trip. It was set up um, through, again, through Instagram. I mean, it is seems to be the platform that everybody kind of, you know, melds together. But um, it was set up as a veterans hunt. Um, so uh, there's Over the Edge Outdoors hooked up with uh, Sodak Horizon. So Ben Klusman is his name. And 
um, basically sponsored for a couple hunters to hunt uh, in, near uh, Buffalo, South Dakota at Hell's Canyon Bow Hunting Ranch. And um, I kind of caught on to it and was like, hey, that sounds really cool. I would like to come. I don't want to be one of the ones that wins a hunt. In fact, I will, you know, pay full price and then whatever you want to do. So they took part of that money and we got to bring another hunter out from it, which I thought was cool. That's you know, awesome. giving feels so good. Um, and that's, uh, um, so that experience was, was really neat. It was my first time, I think in South Dakota, maybe I've flown over it and didn't know, but I just expected <laughs> like, you know, grass, you know, no trees or anything, but this part of the state's, you know, Western part closer to Montana and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, so we went out there for, uh, four days or so and chase goats, um, did not, uh, you know, hook up with one. Unfortunately, if I had a rifle, it would have been done on day one, but that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to bow hunt. Um, so super cool experience, learned a lot. Um, and, it made me want a goat even more. So I'm not done with antelope. <laughs> uh, I hear you starting to get into endurance running again. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can, endurance, those things are 60 miles an hour. Those are, those are you know, Usain Bolt animals. There we go. Fast. Speaking of Usain Bolt, I just kind of a tangent here. I saw a guy um, who ran faster than Usain Bolt. And at the last, like the last 10 steps, he was looking backwards at his competition. Oh, wow. In my opinion, yes, it's a little cocky, but when you know you're that good, like I, you almost yeah. kind of ignore that. But yeah, he was looking back at second place and giving him like a thumbs up or something and still beat Usain's bolt time. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so unreal. people are just getting faster. So you need to go train with him and then go chase goats. <laughs> so here's a funny story on that, on your tangent. So uh, in middle school and high school, I ran with Justin Gatlin. So Justin Gatlin okay. was pre Usain Bolt. He, yeah. Uh, yeah so um yeah in middle school and i was a sprinter so i was mm -hmm. not an endurance athlete um so i i did uh, 100 yards did 200 uh 100 meter 200 meter did hurdles and uh, so yeah I, I ran with justin for uh, quite a while and then he he turned into just absolute insane freak fast <laughs> and when you see someone run that fast you think you're fast when you see that you you realize pretty like, quick you got oh, some work nope. to do <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome that, that's really cool so uh so chasing chasing speed goats or antelope uh, for people that aren't familiar with the term of speed goat um yeah. that's a lot of fun i haven't done it with a bow um i took my kids up to wyoming we did it with a rifle because they're everywhere in wyoming and i just want to get yeah. my kids introduced to hunting a little bit yeah. made them help me clean the animal and I have that whole experience, but, um, that's really awesome. No, that's really cool. And then, uh, what other hunts do you have planned this year? So I've got, uh, September 18th, a friend of mine, or, or we're both driving out to, uh, Colorado. We'll be in the Meeker area and, um, going for elk. So, um, you know, this is our, both of us really our first time, chasing elk uh so we've got a we've got a guide and all that so we're not you know we're not dy you know do it yourself or anything like that but um we need all the help we can get uh you know our alabama knowledge of you know whitetail woods is probably not going to help us too much <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah no I, I i definitely agree with that um you know i'm sure you've looked it up a, a ton have you gone and hunted elk no oh it's your first time oh yeah Oh, all right. Well, you yeah. picked a good time. Uh, the 18th, it starts getting ramped up pretty, pretty hot. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm excited about the first just cause you know, it's September, but, uh, honestly, like the best hunting that we had last year was right there, the 21st, 22nd, um, yeah. here in Utah and, and I'm sure Colorado similar. So I'm excited for you, man. That's awesome. Um, big thing. They're not whitetails. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> don't hunt them like white tails i'm sure you've heard that a million times don't worry about making noise yeah. uh you know stuff like that uh you're, you're gonna have a blast you're gonna have yeah a i'm looking forward to it that's awesome cool deal um you know going on to archery obviously you you like your guns um you know you're not anti-rifle hunting or anything like that but you you're really into archery um why is that um I mean, it was just love at first shot. Uh, again, if I go back to, you know, little seven-year-old Stuart shooting off the patio in the backyard, I mean, again, just, just 
there's there's no one to get mad at if your shot goes wrong it's not the bow it's not the arrow it's you so like you know i think there's a lot of lessons that come out of archery there's accountability there's discipline there's putting in hard work um you know and if you don't do your part the bow and the arrow aren't going to do its part and i think that um there's just something beautiful about it and then to take that and be able to you know go out and provide you know meat and sustenance for your family and friends i mean what's better than that can't think of much more than that that's awesome yeah i I love it man so so love at first shot um you love love archery uh i think that that's awesome why do you tinker so much same reason or do you have you know a different reason for wanting to play around with all the new cool fun toys so remember what you said about anything I take and I just <laughs> take it to the end of the earth. <laughs> yep. So archery is one of those things that there is no end of the earth. Like you can continuously, you know, play and improve and test. And, you know, again, I've, I've got an analytical mindset on, on things and, and, um, you know, I'm, when I shoot, I'm testing group sizes, I'm testing, you know, what, what is deviating, you know, at this point. So, you know, some of it's kind of natural. Some of it is, you know, just how I'm wired. I'm wired to, you know, try to be the best, try to, um, you know, get the most out of my equipment and and really, so I love gear as much as everybody else, but I love hunting more than anything. And I am the opposite of the guy that picked dust his bow off the day before the season opens. I want to go out and give that animal a hundred percent uh, respect, uh, knowing that my equipment is spot on, that I'm not going to shank an arrow because my bow's out of tune or, or, you know, my broadhead isn't sharp. And, you know, I'm trying to give the cleanest, most humane kill I possibly can. And, um, again, I don't want it to be on any of my gear. I think your gear is a controllable aspect. Um, I think your nerves and emotions is something you can try to do, but when you get out there in front of an animal, I mean, nature happens. So, I try to control what I can. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, control the controllables, you know, and, uh, it was funny. I was listening to something the other day where they were talking about Tim Gillingham and, uh, and he is just an amazing archer. And, uh, they were joking around about how, you know, he'll find the perfect setup, perfect setup, yep. and then he'll shoot it for two or three days. And then they'll notice he changed something up and they're like, well, wasn't that, the perfect setup he was like yeah, it was for that day yeah <laughs> i get that so yeah exactly yeah I, I i understand it to a degree i definitely don't i don't work on my own bow for the most part there's some things that i do um but but for the bigger things i definitely go to my pro shop and i told him you know i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna eventually build out a room uh where i can you know do my own stuff and and they're like yeah that'd be cool but then you you wouldn't come around anymore and i'm like <laughs> yeah okay yeah. So I guess they like me there. Um, <laughs> cause I'm up sign. there way too much, <laughs> I bet. I would um, too. but that that's awesome that you, you know, I have a, a high respect for people that, that work on their own bows, understand it down to the very core of, of the bow itself. And, and you've had a hand in every single aspect of, of building that bow. So, so that's awesome. Um, you know, is there anything that you're maybe looking forward to in the next, six months to a year other than obviously the elk hunt uh that that i don't know that you'd like to share i think um probably the biggest thing i'm looking forward to is just really seeing where the social media aspect grows so like my goal behind all of it again i'm strategic to a certain extent a lot of what i do is trying things and it's not strategic which is outside of my comfort zone but overall it's to build my network. It's build, build your network of hunters. It's something I've, I've learned in business that you live and die by your network. And I think, you know, seeing that grow over the next six months plus, and, you know, seeing what type of relationships uh, that, that I, you know, start and, and grow, what opportunities uh, does it open up in terms of, you know, be it hunts or experiences. And again, gear is fine and dandy and it's fun and cool, but I want to take that gear and go have cool experiences with cool, like-minded people, um, you know, to get invited to do, you know, 
go hunt somewhere that I don't get to see often. I mean, th that's really to me what the biggest goal is. So in the next six months, I'd love to see, um, you know, obviously followers grow, but really quality followers that I can build relationships with. Yeah, no, I love that. That's awesome. It's yeah. Social media is an interesting thing because it really can be a time suck. Um, but it's also a really good tool to Absolutely. be able to connect with people. Cause you would have never connected with Ben. You would have never connected with, you know, that, that hunt group more than likely. Right. right. Um, you, you wouldn't have found them through reading a newspaper, like what you, what people used to do. Right. Yeah. Where you'd, you'd look at the pages and you're like, Oh, that's a cool ad. You know, like that, it doesn't happen anymore. It's a lot better, more efficient way. And I do agree with you that there's some negative things with, um, you know, Instagram and, and, and the way that things are, are posed. But at the same time, if you work with that to still get your message across, yeah. to still get the things that you want done. And like you said, bring quality individuals into your message and to link up with them and create a network that way. Um, that's definitely an awesome, awesome way to look at it. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. So, um, okay. Well, I, I've kept you for an hour uh, <laughs> uh, and I don't want to keep you much longer. I know, right. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I love having good conversations with quality individuals like yourself that just uh, you just portray that you love so many different things. You're not just a bow hunter and you're not just a dad. You're you're all of the things wrapped into a person that is finding success day in and day out in all your endeavors. Um, and so what's where where can people find you if they want to link up with you? Yeah. So a few different places. So on Instagram, I am s.g.holmes. And then uh, the new YouTube channel with a whopping two videos is Archer's Insight. So that's Archer's, the letter N, site. And then my blog is the same. It's uh, archersinsight.com, um, which not sure how much longer that'll be up, but hopefully, you know, it'll grow the YouTube bit. But uh, currently those three. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll leave those links down below, guys. And uh, again, thank you so much for being on here, Stuart. I really appreciate your time. Uh, and, you know, I, and I, I've called you SG for so long. It's so it's still weird for me to call you Stuart, but <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Holmes. Uh, but uh, yeah, so thank you again so much for your time. Um, and anyone listening here, please go check him out. Uh, go get linked up with him. He's got some awesome photography. Uh, he does great things with bows and just a great individual overall. So and thanks for your time. And of course, as I always say, guys, get out, live your life and love it.